to join us in this celebration and request you to pray for us. We also assure you of our prayers. We seek to hear God's loving voice and to open our hearts to the Holy Spirit and bring to fulfillment the good work that Jesus has begun in us. Please pray that we may grow in holiness filled with the gift of the Holy Spirit and try to live as God's loving children. Let us celebrate this Holy Mass to deepen our faith in the Gospel and to help us pass it on to others by our examples. May we all be changed for the better through this sacrament of confirmation, which we are privileged to receive it today. God, our Father, you know us before we were born. You called us at baptism to be witnesses of your love for us in Christ. Prepare our hearts and minds today to welcome the gifts of your Holy Spirit that we may become everything you desire us to be as your sons and daughters. Send forth your Spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. Up our hearts 
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear fathers, reverend brothers, Reverend Sisters, my dear people of God, and very especially the confirmandi, the candidates for confirmation. It is with great joy we send a very warm welcome to all of you. Very especially our brothers and sisters who are participating in this Mass through online as um, this Mass is being streamlined. So welcome to all of you, my dear friends, you are participating in this Mass from your homes in Bangalore and outside Bangalore. On behalf of all of us, my dear brothers and sisters, extend a very warm welcome to beloved Archbishop, the Most Reverend Dr. Peter Machado, the Metropolitan Archbishop, who has kindly consented to be with us this morning to administer the sacrament of confirmation to our 40 children. They've been well prepared, and His Grace also was constantly in touch with us in order to prepare them well as His Grace Archbishop is the Chief Catechist. Your Grace, on behalf of all of us, extend a very warm welcome to you. We humbly request you to pray for all of us, very especially for the Confirmandi. My dear brothers and sisters, and very especially the candidates for confirmation, I am also very happy to be here with you and to celebrate this Eucharist with you. It's a joy to celebrate Mass, Eucharist in this church and especially with the special arrangements that and the special attention that Monsignor Jainathan gives to these sacramental signs and symbols. To tell you honestly, I like your dress very much. Our confirmation children, very simple but a divine symbol of purity and also the red symbolizes the blood of Christ. We have a beautiful team there which is written on the altar backdrop there. Shed, broken to share and shed to forgive. The theme of today's liturgy is forgiveness. God teaches us how to forgive. God teaches us what means to experience forgiveness from God and at the same time forgive others. And therefore let us participate in this Eucharist asking a special grace, the gifts of the Holy Spirit for these our children and through them to the whole families that are here and the parish at large. Let us offer this Eucharist asking God's forgiveness for all our sins and our faults. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, 
and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, a virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. pray almighty God that always pondering spiritual things we may carry out in both word and deed that which is pleasing to you through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you into the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever A reading from the first book of Samuel. In those days, Saul arose and went down to the wilderness of Ziph with 3,000 chosen men of Israel to seek David in the wilderness of Ziph. So David and Abishai went to the army by night. And there lay Saul, sleeping within the encampment, with his spear stuck in the ground at his head, and Abner and the army lay round him. Then Abishai said to David, God has given your enemy into your hand this day. 
Nav, please let me pin him to the earth with one stroke of the spear, and I will not strike him twice. But David said to Abishai, Do not destroy him, for who can put out his hand against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? So David took the spear and the jar of water from Saul's head, and they went away. No man saw it or knew it, nor did any awake, for they were all asleep, because a deep sleep from the Lord had fallen upon them. Then David went over to the other side and stood far off on the top of the hill with a great space between them. And David answered and said, Here is the spear, O king. Let one of the young men come over and take it. The Lord rewards every man for his righteousness and his faithfulness. For the Lord gave you into my hand today, and I would not put out my hand against the Lord's anointed. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Responsorial Psalm Lord, send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. Send forth your spirit. Lord, O my soul, O Lord, my God, how great you are! How many are your works, O Lord? In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Your response? Send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. All of these look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it, they gather it up. You open wide your hand, they are well filled. Response Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. You send forth your spirit, and they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord last forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Response Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. I will sing to the Lord all my life. Sing psalms to my God while I live. May my thoughts be pleasing to him. 
I will rejoice in the Lord. Response. Send forth your spirit, O oh Lord, and bring you the face of the earth. Send forth your spirit, O oh Lord, and bring you the face of the earth. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God, with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst. As you yourselves know, this Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. This Jesus God raised up and of that we are all witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this, that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, But I say to you, O year, love your enemies and do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. To one who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from the one who takes away your cloak, 
do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who begs from you, and from one who takes away your goods, do not demand them back. And as you wish that others would do to you, do so to them. If you love those who love you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to, to those from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners and get back the same amount. But love your enemies and do good and lend expecting nothing in return and your reward will be great and you will be sons of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. Be merciful even as your Father is merciful. Judge not and you will not be judged. Condemn not and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given to you. Good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For with the measure you use it will be measured back to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, please keep standing. Now His Grace the Archbishop will bless all of us over here and also participating through online uh, the streamlined mass. Now His Grace will bless with the book of the Gospels. Kindly be seated. My dear friends, we now begin the rite of confirmation with the presentation of the candidates by the parish priest. May I request our parish priest, Monsignor S. Jayanathan, to present the candidates to His Grace the Archbishop. Candidates for confirmation. Please stand. Your Grace, I am pleased to present to you the candidates from Our Lady of Lourdes Church, Whitefield, for the reception of the Sacrament of Confirmation. It is my privilege to present them to you and to request you to administer the Sacrament of Confirmation to these 40 candidates. The church asks that its members be suitably prepared for these sacraments so that they may receive the grace of God freely and knowingly. Have these candidates been formed and instructed? These candidates are prepared for confirmation by participating in the sacramental life of the church by attending religion classes, by participating in our community's process of formation, and have received appropriate catechesis by all those who are responsible for their Christian formation. They have shared in fellowship and prayer with their brothers and sisters, and have also made a commitment to proceed further along the path of Christian initiation. Now, they ask to be confirmed and I testify that they are ready. Now, Archbishop gets the affirmation by the sponsors, followed by the affirmation by the assembly. My dear sponsors, Mr. Ajit and Mrs. Jean, the Christian life and the demands that flow from these sacraments are not to be taken lightly. Therefore, before granting these candidates their request, 
to receive the sacrament of confirmation, it's important that the church also hear the testimony of their sponsors who have journeyed with them. Are these candidates ready to be confirmed today? Now the Archbishop addresses the assembly. So after his grace questions you, my dear brothers and sisters in the congregation, please respond yes. I ask you, my brothers and sisters in the assembly, should these our children be confirmed today? Yes. Dear children, the Archbishop wants you to declare your concern publicly. Therefore, you all should joyfully and boldly answer, I do, when His Grace questions you. Dear brothers and sisters, after His Grace accepts a declar declaration of intent, I request all of you to say, Thanks be to God. My dear candidates, your parish priest, Mr. Jainanan, the faith formators, sponsors, parents and fellow parishioners have testified on your behalf. Are you ready now to receive the sacrament of confirmation by knowing well that it is the sharing in the life and the mission of the Church? In the name of Jesus Christ and His Church, I accept you and I pray that the sacrament which you are about to receive will strengthen your faith and assist the growth of God's kingdom amongst us. Let us all now say, Thanks be to God. Now we are first all of you to be seated for the homily. My dear Munsuno Jainadan, dear fathers, dear sisters, dear parents, and very specially today, our candidates for confirmation. It's your day. Beautiful hymn that you sang, sang at the entrance, it's our day. It's God's day. It's day of the Lord, but very special for these, our children who I said look angelic today and participate in the liturgy of the heavens, the liturgy of the liturgy of God Himself. Normally I like to ask a few questions to the children. I understand there's not much time today because there's another mass afterwards, but I know that last time beautiful answers were given by the children and I know for sure that the white fish children are very very clever, good and God-fearing. Can I ask it is one or two small questions? Okay. The sacrament of confirmation is a sacrament of the Holy Spirit. Have you read in your catechism or Bible or perhaps the teachers, fathers have told you that the Holy Spirit came down when anything about that time when the Holy Spirit came down in the Bible have you read anywhere that the Holy Spirit came down you want to put up your hands, those who know yeah the Holy Spirit came down on the Apostles and they were very good, sit the Holy Spirit came down on the Apostles at Pentecost in the sign of the fire. In the sign of the fiery tongues as it were, which were deposited and that's how the Holy Spirit came down. There was another moment in the Bible where also the Holy Spirit comes down on Jesus at the time of his baptism. And you know, in what form does he come down? 
in the form of a dao in the form of a dao and a beautiful word or sentence or uh, a voice is heard from heaven when jesus is baptized does anyone know what was that voice or what are the words very good this is my beloved son this is my beloved daughter in whom i am well pleased beautiful words this is what you have to experience today the words of god himself when you are confirmed by the holy spirit that i am the son of god i am the daughter of god this is my beloved son this is my beloved daughter another question the holy spirit today gives rather imparts on you certain blessings and certain gifts can anyone tell me what are the gifts of the holy spirit there are seven gifts of the holy spirit okay one yeah wisdom very good i can understand the teachers who so now have prepared the children very well and today i will take one gift of the holy spirit what we call the spirit of understanding because today i understand this is the church of our lady of lords about 10 days ago we celebrated the feast of our lady of lords and perhaps you are still continuing this celebration because mother's day never ends it keeps on continuing it keeps on proceeding as it were so this church our lady of lords and our lady of lords 11th of february was also celebrated as the day of the sick as a day of healing as a day of special concern of the mother to all of us and today's readings speak about healing the healing and healings can are necessary in three areas of our life first of all we need physical he healing you know what's physical healing i am sick these days of corona everyone was scared we have to take some tablets we have to take some injections we have to wear the mask we need physical healing the second is what we call the emotional healing many of us in our mind we are not healed we are sick we are sick perhaps i have certain hatred against somebody i would like to take revenge i am envious i am jealous i am lustful these are the things perhaps that are burning into my heart there are many habits i can't get out of there are certain tendencies that i am not able to conquer and these are the healings that i need of my heart and thirdly we see we need the healings of the holy spirit of our sins of our sinfulness we do commit sin we hurt ourselves and we hurt each other also so there are these three types of healings that we need and today the gospel speaks of what we call forgiveness forgiveness a special type of healing and our dealing with the others are dealing with the others jesus says in the gospel forgive your enemies forgive your enemies and not only that love your enemies do good to those who hate you bless those who curse you pray for those who abuse you and to the one who stri strikes you on the cheek offer him other cheek also and for one who takes away your cloak 
You know, there are so many people who take away our cloak, our money, they cheat us, perhaps they occupy our properties, they encroach. And the gospel says, don't go to fight with them. Give them what you want, perhaps surrender, because ultimately by trying to fight, trying to take revenge, you lose yourself. And finally, Jesus says, as you wish, as you wish that others would do to you, do to them also. There are also more examples here, how to do good, etc. So this is the central message today, to forgive others. Because this is what is happening today. We have loads of, rather, we have barrels of hatred against the others. There are so many in my family, perhaps, I hate. There are so many perhaps in my neighborhood that I hate. There are so many in my office, my boss, my perhaps my subordinates whom I don't like. And the world tells, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Take revenge. Teach them a lesson. And see that they are destroyed so that they don't destroy you. This is the lesson that world gives but the gospel tells us forgive them for they know not what they do you know these days we are listening we are hearing that even christians we are not taken lightly we are taken lightly there are laws and rules that are being brought to us what we call the anti-conversion or perhaps even some of our symbols signs our crosses are being demolished and this is going on. But then we say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Perhaps they have not realized what they are doing, and so forgive them. Today's first reading has a beautiful example of forgiveness also. You know, the, the, the background is David and Saul. Saul is the king, but he has been not done his work well and therefore God discards him and God prepares David for just a small boy but when Jesse comes to say that he is chosen when uh, Samuel comes to say that he is chosen he comes to the house of Jesse and all his sons are there one by one all tall and perhaps very much able, looking like kings themselves. But then Samuel says, God has not chosen them. Do you have any more children? Meh, I don't. I mean, there's one who is grazing there. He's good for nothing. And I don't think he will fit in the type of king that God is looking for. And Samuel says, call him. We won't eat unless he comes. And when David comes, he's just a boy. Perhaps he doesn't have proper clothes and he's dirty. Perhaps he's not cultured. But this is the man. And there's a beautiful sentence there. God sees the heart, not the outside appearance. And therefore, David is taken as king and God is promoting him. But on the other hand, Saul is trying to kill David. Every occasion he hunts for him, you know, to kill him like a dog. He follows him. He sends his armies. And David escapes every time attempts are made on him to, be, to kill him. And today's first reading gives a beautiful scene wherein Saul has reached a place and he goes into a cave. And David, who is far away, sees it. He goes to the cave himself and Saul is sleeping. And at once the commander-in-chief of David says, this is the best chance. And God wants you to be the king. God wants this man to be eliminated and this is the best chance. Let us kill him. And he says, with one shot of the spear, I shall kill him. Please give me the permission to kill him. And David says, no, because Saul is an anointed person. 
God has anointed him, so therefore don't kill him. and that time your parents and God parents held this candle but today you are holding it as father said right it uh, a little aloft with your hand on the chest to say that I promise I make these promises to sacrifice everything that is evil and at the same time the good do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty promises do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who came upon the apostles at Pentecost, and today is given to you sacramentally in confirmation? Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the direction of the body and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. This is the most important part of the rite of confirmation. The, Arch the Archbishop, the successor of the Apostles, will now extend his hands over these candidates and pray for the coming down of the Holy Spirit upon them. My dear friends, in baptism, God our Father, give the new birth of eternal life to his chosen sons and daughters. Let us pray to our Father that he will pour out the Holy Spirit to strengthen his sons and daughters with his gifts and anoint them to be more like Christ, the Son of God. Put out the candles and uh, please kneel down. The candidates kneel down, hold your hands, and the choir will sing Spirit of the Living God, my dear children. As Father said, as Grace said, very important part of the sacrament of confirmation. My dear brothers and sisters, on the day of the Pentecost, the Holy Spirit descended upon the apostles. The same Spirit through our beloved Archbishop is going to be sent down upon our children and upon all of us therefore this is a sacred moment join your hands and pray come holy spirit as the choir sings uh, spirit of the living god
All-powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your sons and daughters from sin and gave them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon them to be their helper and guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence, Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Dear children, now the Archbishop will anoint you with the holy oil of chrism. The anointing is done only for the three sacraments, namely baptism, confirmation and holy orders. Dear children, as you kneel before the Archbishop, Join your hands, tell your name loudly and lift your head so that the Archbishop can anoint you on your forehead. Fragrance of our prayers arise, 
Kindly stand for the prayer of the faithful. My dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly pray to God, the Almighty Father, and be of one mind in our prayer, just as faith, hope, and charity, which proceed from the Holy Spirit, are one. May his work, begun at Pentecost, continue to grow in the hearts of all who believe in him to their fraternal communion, active participation, and spirit-filled mission. Your response shall be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Archbishop Peter Machado, our parish clergy, the parents, faith formators, and all who help these candidates grow as disciples of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, bless and guide them that they may be strengthened by the gift of the Holy Spirit in their life. As they continue leading us in faith, we pray to the Lord, your Lord, response, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for these, our children, who are confirmed today, that their hearts may be always filled with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, in order that they may live and bear witness to their Christian faith by bearing abundant fruits in their lives as disciples of Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Your response? Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. <laughs> we, we pray for our children and youth that they may be well formed in their Christian life without becoming victims to false ideologies and media influence. <clears throat> May their parents, educators, and formators take keen interest in their spiritual and temporal well-being and guide them in the right path by their exemplary lives. We pray to the Lord your response. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our parish community and for each one of us we may surrender ourselves completely to the kingship of Jesus and live a witnessing Christian life. Let us also pray for our leaders that they may work together for the common good by protecting our fundamental rights and by creating our political system that foster equality and dignity to all the citizens. We pray to the Lord. Your response? Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Loving Father, illumine our minds with vision and courage that we may build bridges and not build walls to divide us. We also pray for all those who are trapped with fear and evil forces that they may find the truth and experience freedom of love through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Your Lord. response? Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now pray for our own personal intentions. O oh God, who gave the Holy Spirit to your apostles and will that through them and their successors the same Spirit be handed on to the rest of the faithful, listen favorably to our prayer and grant that your divine grace, which was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, may now spread throughout the world by our Christian commitment through Christ our Lord. Amen.
my brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church. As we celebrate your mysteries O Lord with your observance that is your due we humbly ask you that what we offer to the honor of your majesty May profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering cancelled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by sending to your Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Thank you. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them, let the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks to the elders worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity Together with Francis, our Pope, me onward his servant, and all the clergy. Remember also, our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her husband, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Francis Xavier, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now 
and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. My dear people of God, with joy in our hearts, let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word, and my soul shall be healed.
children will make the thanksgiving prayer children are very fortunate to you not only see the holy spirit we see the blessed lord on our behalf now the thanksgiving prayer will be recited let us thank and praise god for his goodness Come Holy Spirit, renew the heart of your faithful servants. Loving Father, you sent out your Spirit to touch our hearts so that we may believe in you and in Jesus whom you sent. Look kindly on all us who are confirmed. Help us listen to your voice. Open our hearts to your Spirit and bring us to fulfillment the good work that you have begun in us. Make each of us an instrument of your love. Teach us to appreciate what is holy in us and in others, and to be patient with what we do not understand. Deepen our faith in the gospel and help us to pass it on by our example. We pray that you will continue to guide us and sustain us. Grant that on our confirmation day, we may be ready to give ourselves to be your faithful soldiers and servants to our life's end. May we always lead a joyful life by being with you. Loving God, bless our beloved Archbishop, our parish clergy, our dear parents and formators, all those who helped us to prepare for this sacrament, and all of us, your children. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we may experience the effects of the salvation which is placed to us by these mysteries through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessings. May Almighty God bless you in His kindness and pour out saving wisdom upon you. Amen. Amen. May He nourish you always with the teachings of the faith and make you persevere in holy deeds. Amen. Amen. May He turn your steps towards Himself and show you the path of charity and peace. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. To proclaim the gospel by your lives 
Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, God pray, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of Lords, pray for us. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen.